Hi there. It's such a joy to have you join me as we study God's Word together. We are in Psalm 35. Today we will look at verses 13 and 14 together. I do invite you to pray with me first. God, we ask you to speak to our hearts and our minds. We are troubled by events going on in the world around us. And we're troubled even, Lord, by our own battle against sin and temptation in our life. And I pray that the victory of Christ on the cross that, that defeated sin and death and the devil would be applied to our lives and would continue to reverberate throughout the creation and the spread of the gospel. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is what Paul writes. But I, when they were sick, I wore sackcloth. I afflicted myself with fasting. I prayed with head bowed on my chest. I went about as though I grieved for my friend or my brother, as one who laments for his mother. I bowed down in the morning. Now the, the juxtaposition here that, that Paul is or that uh, David is drawing attention to has to do with the fact that he is being maligned and mistreated in a, uh, a deceptive way. He's been betrayed by people that he thought cared for him, and now they're mistreating him, even to the point of seeking his life. And David's saying, those same people I cared for. When they were in need, I was the open hand. When they were hurting, I was the embrace. When they were struggling, my prayers were being prayed to them, to God. And so David's wrestling with this disconnect. Well, even in the midst of the vitriolic suffering and pain and mistreatment that we may endure as followers of Jesus Christ, we are to ever and always maintain our compassion, and especially our compassionate action, our compassionate care of others. Now, this does not mean we become a doormat. This is particularly relevant in events going on in the Middle East right now, even as I record this video and, and you go through it and study it with me. What we must always remember and maintain is we cannot forsake our faith in Christ and our dependence upon the living God, even as we seek justice, even as we seek fairness, even as uh, punishment might be in, administered for wrongs that have been done. We cannot enter into a retributive an excessive, overly uh, unequal, unequal response to those who have harmed us. As David's describing here, he maintained a heart of compassion. And this is impossible for any of us to do, David included. It is impossible for us to maintain a heart of compassion unless our heart has been changed by Jesus Christ. This is one of the clear, deep, and transformative fruits and effects of the gospel where we become a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. We are enabled to love our enemies. We're enabled to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. We are able to have compassionate care of others, even those that don't deserve it. We're able to maintain a compassionate care for others because our hearts have been made new. Now again, this does not mean that there isn't a place for justice. There isn't a place for uh, judgment to come, but that lies ultimately in the hands of the living God. So let us pray. Pray for the peace of the world, peace in our hearts, peace of Jerusalem, peace in the Middle East, peace in our neighborhoods, peace in our streets. And let us be those that demonstrate what that peace looks like in a life and a heart that has been changed by Jesus. I'll see you again next time.